<laughs> so when you did step aside from the Los Angeles Lakers, you said, I need to get back to being magic. Mm -hmm. And we want to know how happy has it made you to get back to being that guy as opposed to being confined to having to be working under the auspices of the Lakers? Great question, Skip. I'm so happy. <laughs> you know, I'm back to building my business. I'm back to I get to say what I want, you know, about any player, right. you know, because I'm an ambassador. Before I took that role, I, you know, I love the NBA. Right. I love promoting the, the game, the players, and I love – for me to take them aside when they want to get into business. Right. And so all those things I couldn't do right. in that role. So now I'm back to I can say what I want, do what I want, also to the freedom of, of going and building my business. Because, listen, before I took that role, my business was growing, you know, in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of I have a financial business, a services business. We're $20 billion now. You know, so just... Building all those is Were you really exciting. Were collecting those? While oh, you were yes. Oh, yes. Because it was tough to juggle both. But I, I said, hey, I'm going to step aside a little bit so I can get this thing right. And the blessing is we got LeBron to sign up. Right. And then now, you know, with AD now and the, the players that they have now, the Lakers have a good job. But I love Jeannie Buss, and we'll always be brother and sister. And if she called me today, hey, I'll be right over there to help her out any way that I can. Do you communicate with her Fairly often? No, not right now. Um, I, I, I communicate with a lot of people over at the Lakers because they're asking me questions. And the biggest question was LeBron James playing point guard. Uh, how did that work for you when you played it for the Lakers? And what happens on defense? So I told him I would always play the guy who was uh, the least offensive-minded guy on okay. the team. So if there was a great and fast point guard, Byron Scott would slide over uh -huh. and play him. If it, it say the two guard was great as well, Jane Worthy would guard him, right. and then I would take the small forward. So it just depends on who the guy is that's not really offensive minded as an opponent. Because you, you were spending so much energy. There you on go. The other side. Okay. And we saw that okay. the other night, and that's what I don't want for LeBron. Mm. I I think LeBron should go back to being the point forward uh -huh. than being the point guard because you got to spend so much energy. And he's 30, what, 5, 35 years old? be 35 old. on his birthday. Exactly, exactly. So I'd rather for him doing that so he can take over the game in the fourth quarter. Right. So speaking of LeBron, there's a lot of conjecture about how you parted with LeBron when you stepped aside. H how do you feel about what relationship remains with you and LeBron? I, we're fine. I, for, listen, Rich Paul, Maverick, LeBron, I love them, Right. And it, it wasn't that I departed with LeBron. You know, I recruited him here. He wanted to be here. Uh, I, I wanted to help him out in business. Not just him, Rich Paul and Maverick. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of his shows, things of that nature. I'm still here for him, right? I can still play that role of the big brother. Right. Uh, nothing has changed other than I'm not sitting in that seat, right? Now, if somebody called me to recruit a player for the Lakers, I'll do that. I, I did that. Right. You know, I, I recruited Kawhi, even on all the things that was going on. Right. I talked to Kawhi and his uncle, right? So um, <clears throat> I think I can help him more in this role because now I don't, I'm not handcuffed on what I can say, what right. I can do. And so uh, I'm always love LeBron because he took a chance on me and he took a chance mm -hmm. on the Lakers. And he had options. He could have went anywhere. Okay. And so uh, I, I think he understands that, hey, listen, if I'm not happy, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm never going to stay for money. I'm never going to stay for the lights. You know, I'm going to stay because my you heart is... You took the pay cut. Oh, oh you, you, you got that right. <laughs> don't tell nobody, though. No, wait a minute, Shannon. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> but LeBron and I are good. But there were some reports that he was a little wounded, that you didn't let him know before you announced yeah. that you were... Well, I, that part, I can understand, okay. right? And, um, but at the same time, uh, I'm a guy who I always have a plan, right? I, I think things out thoroughly, and the decision was made for me, right, for my comfort level. 
And not just I didn't tell LeBron. I didn't even tell Jeannie Buss. Yeah. So you have to remember. Good point. So, so, so I love both of them. And uh, Did again, he talk with LeBron since? No, 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 because season, my birthday was going on. You know, I had a lot going on. But I will sit down with LeBron and Rich Paul and Maverick because it's all three of them. Right. You know, it's it not is. just LeBron. Oh, I got it's it. all three of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after you stepped aside, the Laker front office took an enormous amount of national criticism for their dysfunction. There are lots of reports that actually Linda Rambis and Kurt Rambis, her husband, mm-hmm. made many of the biggest decisions, not Jeannie. Mm-hmm. So put that in perspective for us. How did you see the organization run from the top? Yeah, Jeannie is still running everything. She, she makes all the final calls. Uh, Linda has been working with Jeannie forever, 40, yep. 40 mm-hmm. years, I think it is, or, or just about 40. So I think Linda always is a person that, a go-to person for Jeannie. And, and, and they're best friends. Uh, Kurt came in. Actually, you know, I brought Kurt in. And so Kurt knows the game of basketball. So he was a good person for me to lean on. Are we going in the right direction? On and on and on. What do you think about the offense that Luke Walton was running? You know, things of that nature. Right. So I needed more basketball expertise within the Laker organization. I thought Rob did a nice job of Rob signing. Palenka, yeah. Rob Palinka mm-hmm. did a nice job of signing, uh, you know, Green, Bradley, all those you know, guys. He, he did. He yeah. had to scramble. Yeah, he had to scramble. Yeah. But, you know, Kawhi Leonard was worth waiting for. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. you know, because if Kawhi comes, yeah. I mean. By the way, were you shocked that he went Clippers? Uh, no. He was going to come to the Lakers unless they got Paul George, right? And you know, give Jerry West and uh, Mr. Balmer mm-hmm. all them credit right. for going out making that trade. And also, too, you know what I like? I like the fact that we quite don't know who's going to win the championship. Right. Because it's good for the basketball fans. Oh, sure. right. Because, man, the West is stacked. It's loaded. It is stacked. I mean, listen, there's no off nights no more in the mm-hmm. NBA. No. Even the Not bad the West. Team. No, no. Not the West. <laughs> Not the West. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you play Phoenix, Sacramento, they can beat you. They can. Right? All the way up to the best team. Yeah. So, um, Jeannie is a great CEO, great chairman. She knows what she's doing. She's so super smart. And I think she has all the right people in place. The only thing I worry about, she just don't have nobody uh, there that, you know, she can lean on. Who is there to well, lean I thought on? That was, that, that was me. That was okay. my role. Right. And she could trust me because I didn't want nothing. Right. right? I was there for the right reasons. So and, if Rob had not been sitting between you and Jeannie, would you still be there? If, if I could have just made the calls mm-hmm. that I wanted to make, which was, you know, Luke was not ready at that time. But I'm, I'm happy for him. He went to Sacramento. He's going to do a great job. Sometimes you get fired and you'll do a better job. The second time around. Exactly, exactly. And so I know it was conflict. It was tough. Listen, he an ex-Laker. I'm an ex-Laker, you know. (laughs) And she loves both of us to death, right? And so, but, hey, she she made the call. I made a decision. And now we got to move on. And I'm here for it, though. And she knows that. And I'm here for the Lakers. I'm a Laker, man. I'm never going to. So, so it came down to whether Luke stays or goes then. For, for me, just yeah. to, 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 if, if you're going, you have to empower me. If you bring me, brought me in to be the president, you got to give me that power because now I'm going to take all the criticism when it goes wrong, right? Right. Magic don't know what he's doing or so on. So I got to have my team, my guys in those positions. And I don't mind taking the bullets then, right? I, I don't mind taking, you know, the criticism, criticism and the blowback exactly, that's going to exactly, come along with exactly. that because those are your guys. That's right. That's Did she right. Did she just tell you this is what we're going to do? No, no, she was conflicted because it was tough. You know, she's sitting there, you know, she loves Luke, loves me, and, I, and then we love her, and we're all friends with her too right. at the same time. Yeah. So I didn't want to put her in that position anymore. So I just stepped aside. And so I think that, and uh, Tim, like Wiki, is there. So Tim will be, able, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I said Tim like we can, he, mm-hmm. he used to be an AG. Okay. But Tim is there, so he can help her as well. But here, but isn't it hard, Magic, if you're the CEO, and this is with anything, 
if you come too close, it clouds your judgment and make decisions like what she has to make. It makes it more difficult. Yes. You're not supposed to get attached because you're going to have to make those tough decisions at some point, trade a player, or fire a coach, or do right. something. Right. And when you're that close, it clouds your judgment. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's why I understood. You know, I went home and it's for two nights, and I'm, I couldn't sleep. Right. I said, Irvin, what are you doing, Right. You're putting her in a tough position. Right. And I, I looked up and said, I really don't need this. Right. Right. I said, I'm here for the right reasons, but I don't need it. Right. So let me step aside. Let her go back to making the decisions, not being in a, a, a tough position because right. she likes me and likes Luke. Um, and I'm, I'm sure she's had some sleepless nights as well. Right. Because I was putting pressure on her, you know, got to make this move. Right. And uh, we're trying to win the championship. And I don't think he was a championship coach. So um, it was tough. And listen, I love her. She's doing a wonderful job. And she went out. Look, when I stepped aside, look what happened. I mean, AD trade. I mean, things happen. And the Lakers are in a great position. Okay, but what if you had pulled off the AD trade at the trade deadline? Would you still be... In power. Oh, I was, I would still be there. Okay. And then I could have the coach that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I'd still would. be there, of course. Okay. And you I know. think the same things would have transpired, right? Everything would have fallen into place. Yeah, yeah. Everything would have fallen into place. And um, also, too, um, you know, Kawhi, knowing him, knowing the uncle. So we had some great conversations, right. too. So we would have had a, a, just as good a shot as we had before, but I think even better with me in that position. Oh, so maybe... I'm not saying that he would have came to the Lakers, right, right. But, then, but I'm saying I think we would have had a better shot at him. Ooh. I'm, but why, did, why wouldn't Dale Demps do the deal that David Griffin just did? It, it, it got him fired. See, it's the it's same... Got in the way, yes, and he was looking at me like, I caused Anthony Davis to want to be traded. Right. So we were on the phone, right. and he's blaming me. I said, what are you blaming me for, Dale? I heard he wanted to be traded, so I'm giving you a call. Right. Are you going to trade him? You're not going to trade him? And so he had me send three or four proposals, but he never got serious, Shannon. Mm -hmm. He never got serious. And I said, I told Rob, I told Jeannie, he, he doesn't want to trade AD to us. And... Sure enough, the last one was give us your whole team and five first round picks. I said, listen, man, <laughs> this ain't no two on two. <laughs> I can't give you five first round picks and the whole team. Right. You know, he wanted all our young guys. And I said, no, I can't do it now. That's when I said, he doesn't want to trade them. Right. You know, and then look what happened. When they found out, the owner found out what was the trade proposal right. from us. Right. She was like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> and then the new general manager comes. And, and that's the exact same <laughs> trade that you had on the table that they accepted. Well, is it the same? Is it, it, it's basically the same. Okay. You got the young guys and you got the... What Was Kuzma included in it? Well, remember, it could have went either way. Okay. They had proposals with them, proposals without them. Right. So that was the deal. Okay, how good can Anthony Davis be as a Laker? Oh, uh, I mean, he could be the next great big man. He has everything. He can shoot it from the outside. He can take you off the dribble at 6'11". Um, he can score inside, outside, block shots. He's a great defender. And um, they got to hopefully sign him either during the year or after the season because when LeBron says, I'm, I'm gone, you still got a superstar right. to mm -hmm. build. And other around. players want to come. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, and play with him. Once you get that superstar, especially in a place like Los Angeles, especially for the Lakers, now other superstars mm -hmm. will want to come and other players will want to come. Wow. That's what happened when, you know, think about it. Danny Green had options. Right. A.B. Bradley had options, so they could have went other places. Sure. But because of those two superstars, they wanted to play with them. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed. Or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.